Welcome everybody. Welcome up to uh, my alma mater. I always like to be up here when I can and obviously a lot of us are up here today for a great Vision Zero uh, conference, learning a lot, talking to our colleagues and so this is a, a great time to make this announcement I think um, that uh, we will be in 60 days. We're starting the warning period as of Saturday, lowering the speed limit on the West Side Highway from 35 to 30. And I'm here with a lot of elected officials and advocates and New York State DOT, and you will hear from all of them. I want to give them a quick round of thanks, particularly uh, Senator Hoyman, real leadership on bringing us to this day. And I think a lot of you know, this is going to be the stretch from Battery up to 59th Street, where we have tragically seen since 2013 10 fatalities. And I think you all know, a lot of you I know drive on this stretch of roadway. It's a challenge because it obviously serves as a very busy roadway, but it is also an urban boulevard, as was mentioned in the Daily News today. A place where people are crossing over to Chelsea Piers and uh, the Hudson River Greenway, now the busiest bike path in the country. So a lot of commuters, pedestrians, motorists, we're really great to be able to announce that we're going to be making this street a lot safer. We have, thanks to the legislation passed up in Albany, been able this summer after our July uh, 11th announcement, I want to also thank Assemblymember Glick, um, been able to install three speed cameras along that stretch. They're currently calibrated at a 35 mile an hour speed limit, but again, with, after the 60 day warning period, which starts Saturday, they will be calibrated at 30 miles an hour. And I think a lot of you know, just to give the statistic, many of you are familiar with this. If you, if you as a pedestrian are hit by a car going uh, 40 miles an hour, you have a 90% chance of that collision being fatal. At 30 miles an hour, that number drops to, to 30%. So we think we're gonna see real safety benefits with lowering the speed limit. Again, it is a stretch of road many of you here are familiar with. And now I wanna to turn to some of our colleagues to talk about it. I think maybe we'll start with our partners at State DOT. We have Adam Levine here. To, to, this is a state-owned roadway, but one in which the city has a hand in managing the, the traffic operations. So we work together on this. And Adam, come on up. I want to thank everyone for coming. Governor Andrew Cuomo has always emphasized safety in every aspect of everything we do with the transportation system. And so we're very happy to partner with City DOT and the elected officials and the community board for bringing passion and their commitment to this issue that we recognize is one that is a, very, a lot of concern to all the residents who live and work along Route 9A West Street from Battery Place to 59th Street. So. We're very happy for the improvements that we're going to be able to do. We're very happy to partner on lowering the speed limit, to increasing the pedestrian crossing times, to restriping the roadway so that it's easier for everyone to see everywhere they need to go, and for adding some additional signage improvements that are also going to make it easier for everyone to know when they need to move and when they need to stop, which is very important. So we're, again, thankful very much for everyone here, and I want to turn it back over to the commissioner. Thank you. Thanks so much, Adam. And now I want to turn to someone who's been a great leader for us up in Albany. I think. It was really only, I think, my second month on the job that he hosted what was the first uh, Vision Zero Town Hall I ever went to. He has been an amazing, steadfast champion for making our streets safer and a big driving movement behind what we're doing now on the West Side Highway Center. Back on the thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And thank you, Deputy Commissioner. I'm State Senator Brad Hoyle, and I represent Chelsea, the Upper West Side, uh, Clinton, uh, Greenwich Village, uh, and needless to say, a lot of uh, people who live on the west side of Manhattan. Uh, in February 2017, uh, I, along with a number of my colleagues, 11 of them, in fact, uh, wrote to the State Department of Transportation raising the issue of traffic safety and pedestrian deaths along Route 9A, and we requested a meeting. And State Department of Transportation immediately agreed. The State Department of Transportation agreed to do a traffic study of Route 9A because, as was said by the commissioner, it's a state road. And the study found that our concerns were valid. The study that the state conducted made recommendations for traffic safety improvements, which the state and the city are now implementing. This is a huge win for our constituents along the west side of Manhattan. One, because there is explosive population growth along the west side of Manhattan. You only need to look at the new development along the west side of highway to see that as well as the development of piers like Pier 40, Pier 55, Pier 57 as well. And art projects too cropping up. 
It's an embarrassment of riches, frankly. As well as that explosive population growth, the Hudson River Park is one of the most visited parks in the nation. 17 million people a year use it. So I'm extremely grateful to my colleagues, and I'm going to list them all. Congressman Nadler, Borough President Brewer, Senator Kavanaugh, Senator Jackson, Assemblywoman New, Assemblymember Glick, Assemblymember Gottfried, Speaker Johnson, Assemblymember Linda Rosenthal, Councilmember Chin, and Councilmember Helen Rosenthal for their efforts in working with the State Department of Transportation to get this study, to get these safety changes, and the Commissioner, and the Deputy Commissioner, and of course, the State Commissioner Dominguez and Governor Cuomo for taking this issue seriously and making these changes possible. We will reduce the speed on the West Side Highway, but at the same time, we will increase safety. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. And, and thank you for the list of elected officials that you thank. We obviously at DOT are grateful to both our state elected officials and our city elected officials. And we're lucky to be standing here with someone who is the chair of the City Council Transportation uh, committee who has been an extraordinary partner with us on everything we have done on Vision Zero and stood with us just last week when we announced 14th Street. So without thank further ado, Councilmember Adonis Rodriguez. Thank you. Well, thank you, Commissioner. It is great to hear this announcement today as hundreds of participants, not only from our city, but also from other Chicago, Montreal, they came together invited by transportation attendee in this Vision Zero Summit. So uh, it's a great day again to get this announcement in, and to let all drivers know that yes, we are reducing the speed limit in that particular corridor. That is important only for the residents and also the visitors. You know, there's a, a one of the more active economic area that we have in the city of New York. So I feel again that this announcement is happening at the same time when hundreds of participants in an international summit is taking place in the city of New York addressing how we will make our street safer for the present and the future generation. We already learned the lesson. Reducing a speed limit saves lives. And we, we already remember like a few years ago when the news anchor, he was, he died. You know, Simon, when he was, it, when he was driving in a taxi, you know, and he, he was a passenger in a, in a taxi. Most likely, if there will be a speed limit, con more control or reduction, he will be alive with us today. So I'm happy again that, that we are putting new tools in the place to continue making the street safer for everyone. For me, the message, the message to all the drivers is, guys, we need to share the street. No driver has been involved in a crashes that a pedestrian or a cyclist had died by driving the speed limit. Most of them, most of those cases of the hit and run, most of those cases when pedestrian and cyclists have lost their life have happened when someone is driving over the speed limit. So reducing the speed limit in that particular corridor definitely will save life. I also would like to say that on the 24, the Transportation Committee will be holding our next hearing on Vision Zero and it's especially around saving life for pedestrians and cyclists. And one of the bills that we will be discussing that day is a bill that we've been working together with City Hall and myself that will require seat bill for passengers that are behind the car. So I think that again, this is the way of how we are letting all New Yorkers know that we are committed to continue saving life. Estamos aquí para salvar la vida, estamos aquí para reducir la velocidad, especialmente en el corredor desde la parte de, de la parte baja de Manhattan a la 59. Cuando reducimos la velocidad, todos están más seguros, los choferes, los peatones y los ciclistas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And now I'd like to call up uh, the group that is actually sponsoring the, the Vision Zero conference today that has also been an incredible source of support and advocacy for all our work. Danny Harris, Head of Transportation Alternatives. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, thank you for all the elected officials that are here today. Today we're here celebrating with leaders across the world about what Vision, what Vision Zero means, not just for our city, but the lessons that we can take from New York around the world. Today, Commissioner and with the leadership of the electeds, 
Uh, we're giving another signal to New Yorkers that this is a city for New Yorkers. Whether you walk or bike, this is not a city where you can drive at whatever uh, speed that you'd like. This is a city where the pedestrians and the bicyclists have the right of way, and it's about safety, and most importantly, it's about the opportunity and the dignity of every New Yorker to have a city that believes in them and that allows them to cross the street uh, with safety and ease. So with that, we say thank you very much for your support. Thanks, Danny. All right, did, did I get everybody? Okay. Um, questions? Yes, Andrew. Uh, as, with regard to calibrating to 30 after the 60-day warning yeah. period, if you're driving on the highway, a state trooper generally gives you a five-mile-an-hour grace amount. You're saying 31, you get a ticket. No, no, just so if, if you're, if, if, at least for the camera enforcement piece of it, our camera, our state legislation that authorizes with speed cameras, we can only issue a ticket 10 miles if you're going 10 miles over the speed limit. So that's why I, I cited that statistics of. So you're saying the camera is set, so the speed limit becomes 30, but you can only get a ticket if you're going 40. Right, that, that's 41. 40. Which is well, still we, at the death statistic you cited. Right, but what we, just so you know, what we found in places where we put speed cameras, and we've just installed three of them on this stretch. We don't have the, we didn't have the data here today, but we'll get it to you all if you want to see. We see speeding go down by 60%. So, you know, we, we see, once people get that first ticket, they really slow down. They don't just slow down two miles an hour. They slow down quite a bit more than that. And we're, we're really hopeful lowering the speed limit here with the new speed cameras, we're going to see that same effect. But if people continue to do 35, they're not going to get a ticket, and they can just drive down the West Side Highway. And even right, but, but again, we, we tend to see where we have those cameras, it lowers the speeds quite a bit for everybody. And look, we will occasionally also have regular you know, police and law enforcement out there, and they can they can pull you over as well. But I think cameras will do the bulk of the work. The commissioner had a question about uh, concerns over traffic with congestion pricing coming, and a lot of cars expected to use highways on Manhattan's perimeter. People are saying, what kind of an impact will this reduced speed have on all those cars that are already there? Right. It, it, it's interesting, and I've, I've even sort of heard a different version of that question, which is, admittedly, there are times on the West Side Highway when nobody is even going 30 miles an hour, let alone 40. You know, you have to remember, for a lot of the city's big quarters, they function very differently at different times of the day. And one of the things we've seen on the West Side Highway, particularly as you get into the later evening hours, speeds can really pick up, and that's where we've seen collisions and fatalities. You know, in parts of the day where it's more congested, you know, the speed limit may not be the governing factor as to how far, you know, how fast you have to And one thing I think we are hoping with congestion pricing, what they have seen in London and Stockholm is on day one, traffic volumes went down by around 20% even on the adjoining roads as well. So I, I'm hoping New Yorkers will see a real benefit in congestion reduction all over the city, including uh, West Side Highway and FDR Drive. Can you spell out, to just, just so we have it in kind of one bite, what the different changes are? There's speed cams, there's lane markings, there's pedestrians. Can you, can you just... Right, right. And, I, and I actually probably we'll, we'll call up our state partners uh, to talk a bit about that as well. On the city side, we've installed speed cameras. We are now lowering the speed limit from 35 to 30. We have done a lot of work to improve pedestrian crossings there. And then let, let, I'll let my colleague uh, Adam from the state talk about the state. Sure, so we're enhancing the pedestrian crossing markings, the pavement markings that have worn away over the past several years so that they're, they're sharper, they're more obvious for anyone that's driving, anyone that's walking to know where to cross and when. We're also uh, working with City DOT. We're gonna be uh, setting up a separate uh, right turn phase for the traffic signals that's going to require that anybody is making a right turn, specifically right now in the area of Battery Park City, but that may also go to a couple of locations north in Community Board 4, uh, where they will have to stop and let the bicyclists and pedestrians who are on the Hudson River Greenway go, and then everyone will have to stop who's walking and bicycling, and then the cars can go. So it separates the movements and increases the safety for everyone there. And there is additional signage that we're also putting down and it's the, um, the payment, I'm sorry, the signal timing as well. Oh, and I, I did, yes, thank you. I did just want to mention the signal timing starting Saturday, we will be uh, adjusting the signal timing to encourage vehicles to drive at that 30 miles an hour. So if you drive at that speed, you'll get more green lights. It will encourage you to obey the speed limit. Not to on this, I just want to clarify, at 35, speed cameras wouldn't take it useful for 46, and at 30, they will, they'll take it to you at 30, so even 41. people who are sort of 
doing the speeding they know they can get away with are going less fast. Right, and again, as I just mentioned, between the signal timing and I think some of the improvements we're working on the state with, that's other ways to encourage people to drive at that safe 35 mile, 30 mile an hour speed limit. I wonder if I can ask Adam a question from the state. So there's obviously you're going to hear some pushback from uh, car drivers and people in car culture. But as you know, the vast majority of users of the West Side Highway are cyclists, pedestrians, people getting across that or up and down that road. When is it going to be the time for you to announce that you're going to remove a lane from car drivers and give it to the majority of users of that roadway, cyclists and pedestrians? Well, um, I don't think that day is going to be today because we're here to announce all these other improvements that we're very proud Have you of. Have studied it? I mean, you, you do know that one of the reasons that we're comfortable with with the reduction of the speed limit is because as, as Commissioner Trottenberg said a lot of the time of day the speeds are at around 30 miles an hour or lower and that is to accommodate the large amount of vehicles including trucks that are on the roadway so uh, I, I mean it's certainly something that could be looked at in the future I'm not gonna say we're looking at it anytime soon but to remove a lane is going to congest the road up quite a bit and it is a freight corridor there are not a lot of roads that are going to allow trucks to get into Manhattan if you increase the, the the time that it takes them to get where they need to go it's going to probably increase costs and it'll have other impacts that would need to be studied but, but it might have suggest your pricing down just to follow up and let me just let me just add if I could uh, speaking of a change in culture and car culture the fact that we had such willing partners with the state DOT to initiate the study, I think, and, and from Governor Cuomo, is remarkable in and of itself, not to mention the fact that we passed legislation in Albany for new speed cameras and congestion pricing. So you are seeing, I think, a dramatic shift in the attitude toward elected officials as it pertains to vehicles and the need for additional safety measures for pedestrians and cyclists. This is we, you know, one of the things that I think inspired the elected officials was not only the, the tragic death of Bob Simon of 60 Minutes uh, on the West Side Highway, but a young man named Jack Koval who had just moved to New York City, had lived in New York City for a few months and was crossing the West Side Highway one evening and was struck and killed. His mom went up and down the West Side Highway erecting posters that said, drive like your son lives here. And I think that was a testament to the, to, the, to the elected officials that we needed to do something. And I really have to thank Governor Cuomo again for, for getting this study underway and the State Department of Transportation and in initiating it. In regards to these pedestrian injuries and fatalities, do we know, are the majority of them happening in areas where they're crossing properly, improperly? What are the st statistics on that? I know the answer to that off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right. I think, I mean, I think actually someone mentioned it at the conference today. In most places where we see these kinds of crashes, the pedestrian is in the crosswalk, sort of being where they're with the light, being where they're supposed to be. We can see if we can pull some of the data here, but I imagine that would probably hold true. And the commissioner, if you don't mind. Also, one thing is that in most cases of crashes, including hit the road and many of those moments where we lose cyclists or pedestrians, if the driver will be driving the speed limit, most likely he or she will not be arrested and the person will not die. Like DJ Paul, the case of La Mega, like he crossed the street, not in the intersection. He crossed the street in the middle of the block, but the driver was driving like 50 miles per hour. So if the driver will be in the speed limit, no crashes in the city of New York that results with the news that you cover. Someone being killed happened because the driver stopped in the stop sign. The driver fell to the pedestrians. Most of them happened because the drivers are driving over the speed limit. They cross the stop sign or they are crossing the red light. I, I, just want, I just want to emphasize sort of a key point that, that the chairman just made, which is the streets of New York are unpredictable. I'm never going to say that every single motorist, pedestrian, cyclist will be in, behaving exactly perfectly. But if you, the motorist, are driving at a safe speed, if a collision happens for whatever reason, you will have more reaction time and it is so much less likely that that collision will be fatal. And so you behind the wheel, just think about that. You go a little slower. For whatever reason, you hit somebody. If you're going at a safe speed, that person is hopefully going to be able to get up and walk away. And I think we all want that. Can I ask you a question? You admit? Well, here, wait, let him go, then Mary Beth will, will come to you. Uh, 
Uh, it's not rich. rich. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying I, to be I, uh, generous. My question is, have most of the injuries and fatalities taken place other than at rush hour? In other words, at night? Or in, in, uh, do you have any sense yeah, of that? Yeah, you know what? I, I I think I want to get back to you on that. We're saying we think it's a mix, but I don't. Admittedly, I don't have those statistics right in front of me, Rich. So we'll right. and then we'll come back to you other, on that. So if I have one other follow-up, you mentioned there's uh, quite a percentage of time when when cars aren't doing 30 miles an hour. Does anybody have any sense of how much of the day is spent, you know, below 30 miles per hour? Uh, on the West Side Highway. Yeah, I don't know if you all know Josh Benson, who is Deputy Commissioner for Traffic Operations, right. the man behind all the cameras, the <laughs> signal timing, a lot of amazing work that we're doing. Yeah, so, um, I'm sorry, the, could you repeat the question again? I just, just, uh, just the, how much of the day is, uh, is traffic on the West Side Highway spending below 30 miles per hour? Below now? 30 today, before the speed limit change. Right, right, right. You know, I don't know the exact amount. It definitely happens, as the Commissioner mentioned, there are periods of congestion, um, but what we see is really the off peaks uh, people get up uh, at much higher speeds they, they feel a little overly free to uh, to hit the gas um, because they see that open road in front of them and the, the signal timing the commissioner mentioned we're resynchronizing the lights to favor a 30 mile per hour speed limit so if you're going the speed limit you're going to get rewarded with more greens if you're going too fast you're going to encounter a red much sooner and so that's a, a treatment that we've done on a lot of streets we think it's going to be a very effective complement here to, to the new, new speed limit. You, you mentioned being together for, uh, regarding the 14th Street busway before. Can you give us a quick update how that's going? And there is talk that, that, that coming from city government that you've been pleased and are considering maybe extending that sort of program to other major thoroughfares. So, so I, I think we would say, look, we are certainly pleased that, that 14th Street, and look, it, it has only been one week, and I, I want to caveat, people are settling in, we still have a lot of traffic agents on the ground, and, and just so folks know, you know, my team has been out there, I've been out there a bunch of days, my team has been out there every day troubleshooting, we're seeing places where we're still doing adjustments to signal timing and, and looking at how we can continue to improve it. But preliminary data and anecdotes are showing, in some cases, bus speeds are improving by as much as 30%, which is fantastic. And I think if you just go on Twitter and you see a lot of people are reporting uh, they've been really pleased with how fast the buses are moving, the reduction in auto traffic, the street feels calmer and safer. And we haven't seen so far a terrible traffic spillover onto the side streets. But that said, we're still, you know, we're still in the well, process of adjusting it. And what about 13? University where all three go together. Yeah, yeah that, that is definitely one spot where I think, and it's interesting, in the original design we had looked at potentially making University a southbound street all the way down to 12th Street. There was big building constructioning happening on the west side of the street, so now that those two blocks of University kind of converge on each other. We're taking a look at that. It's still early. We're going to see if the traffic settles out, but if not, yeah, that may be a place we want to adjust that so second no block. Idea last week and this week for that intersection. I mean, again, it would potentially be reversing that university place block between 13th and 12th, but it's only one week in, and, you know, we found with big projects like these, you've got to give it a little time for traffic patterns to settle in. We will be tweaking and adjusting if we need to. Well, would you go in into other thoroughfares? Would you have right, a bus? Sorry, it's would you have a bus lane? Any downside to the new speed? Any downside to all this? I mean, you know, I think you just heard me, I think, made a passionate plea for driving at a safe speed on the busy streets of New York. You will keep your fellow New Yorkers who are walking and biking and also driving safer. And I think you as a motorist, wouldn't you rather drive at a safe speed? And if a collision happened, wouldn't it be better to know that everybody walked away from it? So I've often made this reassurance that I have here, the, the, traffic, uh, the traffic signal expert. We have a lot of traffic lights in this city. No matter where you go, you're going to hit one pretty soon. So there really isn't much advantage in gunning it. And, and we would rather just have you drive at safe speed. You will get where you're going. But would you, the, the question. Yeah, I know. 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 I think we're, we're gratified by the results so far, and you know, the question is, is it's going to be a template in other places? It could be. 
I'm not going to say today where we might go next. We have some ideas in mind, but let's let this one settle in. And I, I, know, I think we want to close here with Mary Beth Cowie, who I think um, you know is an Upper West Sider, and I think can 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 I know, I know and and can really speak very personally about yeah 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 Mary Beth, come on up. Who, who can really I, I think speak really personally about this. and and by the way has been an extraordinary champion for safer streets in the city. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, as bad you will remember, uh, my husband was killed on the West Side Highway. It's been 13 years um, since we've been chipping away at this, and I'm really thrilled to hear that the speed limit is finally being lowered. He and I were cycling um, on the Greenway along the West Side Highway, and at an intersection where we had a green light, a green bicycle light to go through, a tow truck took a fast turn off the highway because it's going at the clip, I'm sure, that all the cars were going, and just pulled in, missed me, hit my husband. My husband was a physician here on the Upper West Side of Manhattan for over 30 years. He died three days later from his injuries. This is why we're doing this. This is a loss to our communities. Not just my family, although my family was devastated, but to all of us. People lost their doctor, they lost their soccer coach, they lost their neighbor, their friend, their uncle. You know, it's a no-brainer, okay? Gersh, I look forward to the day when we get rid of another lane on any highway in New York City because it's going to make this a more livable, walkable, breathable, stress-less, stress it's never going to be stress-free, but stress-less city. And I think we all want that. Thank you. Your name, ma'am, and your husband's name? Yes, my name is Mary Beth Kelly, and my husband was Dr. Carl Henry Nacht. Just this morning, I did an introduction to the Department of Medicine at Mount Sinai on this very issue and why we have a public health crisis in our midst, and it needs to be declared so, because they do an, an annual lecture in his honor every year, and I get to say a little bit about this work and advocacy. And as a founding member of Families for Safe Streets, I couldn't be happier than to be both here, having done that this morning, and attending the conference for Vision Zero. So, get the word out. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Mary Beth. I, Thank I, you, I met Mary Beth very, very early on, and you know, to hear the painful story of losing the love of her life, her soulmate, I think all of us can think about the unbelievable pain of that, and it, it makes us all want to commit to making our streets safer. So thank you so much, Mary Beth. Any, any, other, uh, um, any other questions? Just a quick mention. I know some people uh, were debating whether or not it would be uh, an idea to add more pedestrian bridges, kind of like they have in cities like Las Vegas, to portions of the West Side Highway. Is that something we've considered? Some people are saying, you know, if you really do care about pedestrians, that's the most foolproof yeah, way to it, protect it's them. It's interesting. There's a, there's a real debate in the safety community about that, because I think there, on the one hand, is a real belief in safety in numbers that actually the way to make a street safe and humanize it is to have people out on it and not have them all go up above it. There, ha there is a new pedestrian bridge that's gone up, the, the Thames Street Bridge, you've seen it come up, so uh, one that was being built by Battery Park City, working with the city, but I think in general, we want to humanize the street and get more people, more cyclists, more people crossing it, not kind of pull the people off of it. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much.